Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, we will focus on two response components, slider and button. In a lot of psychological studies, we need to ask our participants to respond to some rating scales. So today, we will have a look at how to use PsychoPy to achieve that. So here is a blank PsychoPy experiment. We first define a question for the rating scale. I will put, I think this system is easy to use here. And I'm going to move this question a little bit upper from the center point, since I want the rating scale to be put in the center of the screen. One thing I want to mention here is the position parameters. The first parameter responds to the horizontal movement. If we want to make the stimulus left to the center point, the value here should be negative, and the positive value corresponds to the right side. The second parameter represents the vertical movement. If you want it to be upper, put positive value here, otherwise put negative values. Here I will just move it a little bit upper, so I put 0.3 here. Next, let's put a slider. I want this slider to be an infinity one, since I want the participants to have enough time to make their decisions. The ticks here are to define your rating points on the scale. I'm going to put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here, which means my scale will have 5 points. We have two choices here for labels. The first one is just putting the labels for both ends. Other one is defining labels for each rate point. Here I will just put two labels for point 1 and point 5 as strongly disagree and strongly agree. The granularity here also has two choices. If we put zero, which means our participants can read at any point on the scale. For example, they can read 0 0.7. Our scale will become a continuous rating. If we put one here, our participants can only read at the points that we defined, that is, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I will put 1 for this tutorial. And don't forget to untick this box here. If we tick this box, participants will be brought to the next page once they click on the slider, and they have no chance to modify their choices. So we will add a button for the participants to go to the next block, rather than automatically force end the current routine. Okay, the last thing we need to do to this slider is to make sure it is in the position that we want. Let's change it to 0, 0 to put it at the center point. Great, now we will start to add the bottom. We have two methods. The first one is to use the bottom response. One key thing is the start point, since we want the bottom shows up after the participants select somewhere on the slider. So the start point here needs to be changed to condition. And I'll put slider rating. And the slider here is the name of our slider. So if you name your slider my slider, you would need to put my slider dot rating here. Let's put the button text. Continue. The callback function here is the thing that will happen after participants click the button. Let's put something simple here. Um print click. I'll change the size to 0 0.3, 0 0.1, and the position to 0 0.4, negative 0 0.4. Okay, let's end and add routine here. Now let's try whether it works. Great, it works well. And we can see here, it's printed click when we click the button. Another way to add a clickable button is to add a clickable image. I made an image for the button, look like this. Now we remove the button and we add this image to our experiment. The start condition is the same as the button, slider dot rating. And we put the path of the image here. Let's change the size to uh, 0 0.35, 0 0.15, and the position as 0 0.4, negative 0 0.4. Next, we need to make it clickable. So we add a mouse response here, the same start condition. And we'll change this as valid click, so we can make sure only the image stimulus will be clickable. Let's post its name here, and let's see how it works. Perfect. That's all for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from the video. If you have any questions about today's content, please leave a comment and see you in the next tutorial.